new initiative called the Long Term Plan. This is to tackle childhood obesity. Now, severely overweight children aged between just two and 18 are going to be referred to specialist clinics across England. It's a pilot scheme at the moment, but they're hoping to roll it out, um, where they'll have sessions with psychologists, dietitians, um, social workers, paediatricians, nutritionists, um, and the aim is then to be given a personalised treatment plan. The parents of that child may also be offered group therapy and dietary advice so that they can help their children. So when I first started reading about this, I thought this sounds a good idea. What I hate always is the headlines because it's always fat camp, you know, fat kids, fat camp. The language I find quite damning mm. and and blaming and shaming and when I read the details of this I think this sounds like a good initiative is that it won't just be right let's look at what you eat you're eating too much stop it it's going to say let's have a look at the whole holistically this child to say what are their home circumstances mental health you know they're going to have psychologists the parents can or can't be involved if they wish um, I presume you know referred by a GP so it'll be a whole team of people, and I think this is great. I was shocked by the age of two mm. children as young as two who are considered to be obese. But to me, that highlights this enormous, you know, epidemic we have of obese children in this country mm. and shows, Jane, how you have to start at the grassroots. I mean, you have to get them very, very young to in any way sort this out. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you sort of, yes, you have to spot the signs. And I mean, Judy, you'll know better than this than me because with your social work that you did when you go into people's houses. But, you know, there's a certain age with babies and children where you can sort of say, well, if there's an issue, it's got to be an issue that's within the climate of the home. Mm. When they get older, you've got the, the bigger issue of the, the food shops that kids can go to. I mean, pretty much every local high street now is stuffed with, with um, fast food fast shops, food, yeah. which were never there when we were kids. No. You know, you had to work very... I mean, I don't, don't think I even went out to eat till I was about 15. Mm. Um, so there's a, there's a whole sort of um, climate of, of eating habits, I think, that, that we have to tackle. But for me... The biggest problem, and they still keep they pushing it onto the parents the whole time. They're going, you know, this is what you you as parents can do. They have to tackle the food industry's mm. role in it as well. Mm. The labelling that's very misleading. Mm. You know, the fact that there are lots of, of these fast food takeaways that gather around schools and things like that, sort of literally pushing junk food to children when they come out of school. All, all of that, and they, they just don't ever seem to tackle it because I think the food industry's got a really powerful lobby. They get busy behind the scenes, you know, and so the government ignores the food industry's role and just pushes it on onto the mm. parents. You, you know, you're a single parent. We've, you've talked here about, you know, how little mm. money you, you were living on. I mean, it, it must be difficult to always look at healthy options. Sometimes healthy options can be more expensive. I think, you know, one of the words that you said, which really is, is one of the foundation of it, looking at stuff holistically. And within this, yes, I've definitely worked with people who's had the same challenges and even myself. But I think as well, it's an e economical thing. I think we're, we've got to look at the people that's on the breadline in poverty and finding ways to just, as they may feel, just feed their children. And on top of that, you know, you go into shops like you're saying and the things that are not healthy are cheaper you know you can buy one get three you know free so if you're at that stage multi -pack you, multi -pack, you've only got a minimum amount of money you haven't got that education around food you're going to stock up when I you know things were harder for me I wouldn't necessarily stock up on the sweet things but I would stock up on the carbs and the pasta and the rice and um, and with everything it's about a balance but my concern is you know, you can talk to someone about what they're feeding their child and how much they're feeding it, but if you're not dealing with the other issues like poverty, like the area that they're living, why but they're buying only this particular thing, it's a problem. I think that's why I think this, this scheme, the, the long-term plan they're calling it, Katie, um, they're saying that they'll be offered, you know, therapy <coughs> to pinpoint the cause of the weight gain. There'll be group sessions, mm. psychologists, you know, dietitians, social workers. So it's not just saying, just let's look at what you eat. It's like, why are you eating that? Yeah. What are the, maybe the emotional issues surrounding it. And I think it's really good they've acknowledged that because I agree with the panel that education is so important. But I know myself, I've spent a lot of time on gastro wards, you know, I've had a feeding tube, which meant I was in wards with patients that had had gastric bands, sleeves, bypasses, and it's very much psychological. It's not 
sometimes a choice. It's not about greed. And at both ends of the scale, whether that's binge eating or right down to anorexia, mm -hmm. you know, that comes from trauma. That is a form of self-harm. It's very much an emotional thing. And I've seen patients recover after bans and still see themselves as the former patient. They didn't see themselves as a different person afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they had to have not just a couple of sessions with a therapist, they had to have psychological support for years to be able to get help and freedom from that mm -hmm. self-harming and addiction. And while that's going on, and I think all this sounds excellent, I said it's a pilot scheme across England at the moment, 15 of these clinics, but they're saying if it's successful, they'll roll that out. But I agree with you, Jane. Since you and I have been on Loose Women, which is a very long time, mm. we have talked about oh, childhood obesity. Endlessly. And we've talked about how are they allowed to put mm. eight teaspoons of sugar into yeah. a fizzy drink. And not say so and on not the front. Say it. Eight teaspoons of yeah. sugar. Mm. And then yeah. people can make informed decisions. You know, yeah. when you go into the supermarket, we're all busy. No one's got time to put on the what you because basically you, see you, it. you need yeah. a magnifying glass to mm. see the the, yeah. the information on the back. And yeah, I mean, all of that, it's, it, it's a, it, it, as you said, it's a holistic mm. approach. And I think there's very few of us or very few parents who don't know that junk food is bad for you mm. if you have too much of it. But as you rightly say, if you're in a, a you know, an economic dire strait, you probably don't have a car. Yeah. So all the shops that are available to you, if they're the ones that are peddling this stuff, yeah. what options do you have? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a very big subject, isn't yeah, it? it uh, is. We're only scratching the surface there, but that is called the NHS Long-Term Plan.